This is well regarded to be one of the best MacBooks of all time. Perhaps it's due to the port selection, but I say that this is one of the last MacBooks where you can easily upgrade a major component. So today, I'm going to show you how to upgrade your MacBook's SSD on the cheap. More on that after the intro. Okay, so first off, I want to mention I'm talking about the Retina MacBook Pros with the glowing Apple logo. MacBooks from 2016 and onward had all their major components soldered onto the logic board. Luckily for those of us who didn't upgrade, Apple added widespread non-volatile memory express, simply known as MVME, SSD support in macOS High Sierra, which released in late 2017. Previously, even if you could adapt an SSD to Apple's proprietary connector, macOS required special firmware on the drive to work properly. After High Sierra, this was no longer the case and a wide range of MVMe drives have been supported by macOS ever since. Now if you were listening carefully, you probably just heard me mention Apple's proprietary connector they used in their OEM SSDs. There have been third party options available with this special connector, but the prices are pretty steep for an otherwise normal SSD. Luckily for us again, M.2 adapters have gotten really cheap and reliable over the past couple of years to where you can buy these adapters anywhere from 5 bucks to 20 bucks. Pair that with the lower prices of MVME SSDs these days, and you can easily more than multiply your internal SSD for not too much money. Lastly, before I get more into the details, I want to warn you that some MacBook models do not sleep or hibernate properly when you use these adapters. I know that Syntec displays an advisory for 2013 or 2014 MacBook Pros with this issue, and you can get around it by not letting your MacBook sleep ever. Just do your research and if this is a deal breaker for you then you might have to look into buying used OEM SSDs off eBay or looking at a solution OWC provides. First we obviously need an adapter so our SSD can interface with the connector on the MacBook Pro. You can find a whole bunch of these with the search MacBook SSD adapter but the one I got here is from Syntec and I mainly went for it because it had so many great reviews. These adapters are the kind of things where you can get a product very easily that will not work with your device or just not work at all. So I encourage you to do your research on what MacBook Pro you have and make sure the adapter you are buying is meant for that model. Going to About This Mac can tell you what model year your laptop is, but you can find a more specific model number on the back side of the machine, which can help you know exactly what device you have. There are also two main types of adapters, one of which seems to be just the adapter itself, which plugs into the end of an M.2 SSD, and the other has a PCB backplane. I went for the backplane model because I felt it would be more secure inside the MacBook, but I honestly have no idea. Next, we have to choose our SSD, and I wish it was as simple as me telling you to go out and buy the cheapest SSD you can find, but some adapters are really specific on the kind of SSDs they want. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the SSD has to use the MVME protocol, but not every M.2 SSD is an MVME SSD, if that makes sense. Like here's a Western Digital Blue M.2 SSD, but as you can see the connector type is not correct, and it uses the SATA 3 protocol instead of MVME. Because Syntec officially supported it, I spent a little extra cash and got a 500GB Samsung 970 EVO M.2 NVMe SSD, but there's a whole list of SSDs they officially support, and I bet you can find some of these on a good deal. Lots of people who bought this adapter on Amazon also bought the 970 EVO, and that paired with the reliability that is synonymous with Samsung SSDs had me very comfortable with this purchase. Also, for what it's worth, if you look at Apple's OEM SSD, the memory chips are also manufactured by Samsung, so take that as you will. For the whole installation process, you will need three different types of screwdrivers. One is a Pentalo P5 screwdriver to unscrew the back panel of your MacBook. The second is a T5 Torx screwdriver to uninstall the Apple SSD in your MacBook. And then finally, you'll need a small Phillips head screwdriver to secure the M.2 SSD to the adapter to the MacBook. These screwdrivers are not very expensive on Amazon, but you could always invest in a more versatile iFixit screwdriver kit if you find yourself opening various tech devices often. This is not an ad, but I've just been very pleased with my own iFixit screwdriver set. You will also need a flash drive with at least 14 gigabytes of storage to create a bootable macOS USB. Finally, while it's not required, backing up your Mac via Time Machine is always a good idea before you open up the back lid. A nice feature of Time Machine is that you can choose to restore your MacBook to one of those backups, so after we install the new SSD, we can pick up right where we left off. Your first Time Machine backup can take a while depending on how much data you have to back up and how quick your backup media is. I'm using 
using this sweet Sabrent hard drive adapter I did a video on, which you can check out here. All right, so before opening up the MacBook, we have to create a bootable USB drive to install macOS because our new SSD will be completely blank. Apple has a really good guide to this on their website, which I'll link below. But basically all you have to do is download the latest version of macOS off the App Store. So in my case, it's macOS Big Sur, and then run a terminal command to create the installation media. It might take a little while, so be patient, but the whole process was very straightforward. Installation of the new SSD with the adapter was super easy. So if you find yourself uncomfortable opening up the back lid, of your MacBook, rest assured everything will be okay. The first thing we'll want to do is unscrew the 10 P5 pentalobe screws securing the back panel to the chassis. Some of these screws are different lengths so you want to be sure not to mix them up. A pillbox could be a good makeshift screw organizer if you don't have one. After removing all the screws just pull up on the aluminum back panel from the top as there are two clips near the center of the device that are still holding on. Once presented with the logic board we will immediately want to disconnect the battery from the rest of the machine. If you have nails like me it's not hard to pull up on the connector and bend it back so the battery won't accidentally get reconnected. You could also use a plastic spudger as that is what they're made to do, but I didn't have one lying around. It's important throughout the whole process that you try to touch the main logic board as little as possible for two reasons. One, the oils on your finger will make the logic board look worse, and two, you don't want to increase the risk of static discharge killing some of your components. If you want to know more about how effective static discharge can really be, there's this hilarious video with Electroboom and Linus Tech Tips that I think you should check out. In the upper right hand corner of the logic board you can see our OEM 128 gigabyte Apple SSD. Grab your T5 Torx screwdriver to remove the single screw holding the drive in place. Then it just slides right out when you pull to the left. Now it's time to procure our new NVMe drive and adapter. My adapter came in an anti-static bag so if yours does too be cautious because there's also a screw that comes with the adapter in order to secure the drive adapter and logic board together. The adapter connects to the MacBook just like our old Apple SSD did and then our SSD is installed like any other M.2 SSD. If you're not familiar, the SSD will be inserted at an angle and will be secured down by a screw at the end. In the footage here, you can see me struggling, but that's because I didn't see I actually had not inserted the adapter all the way into the logic board connector. Upon a separate installation I did for B-roll, once I pushed the adapter in all the way, the threads in the screw hole lined up perfectly. As for height clearance, I noticed the adapter and the SSD sat a little bit higher than all the other components, but when reinstalling the back panel, it was not an issue whatsoever. Don't forget to reconnect the battery and then re-secure the back panel in place with the same 10 P5 pentalobe screws. So once the laptop is reassembled, we will want to plug into wall power and insert our flash drive that contains our Mac OS install. After turning on the Mac, we will want to hold down the option key in order to see a list of bootable devices connected to this Mac. Select the bootable USB, wait a little bit, and this recovery menu will pop up, allowing you access to disk utility, terminal, installation utilities, and more. Now something I'm not quite sure about is that there's a menu option to restore from a time machine backup, but it didn't let me select it before actually installing macOS first. No matter what, we have to reinstall macOS, so you have to head to disk utility to format our blank SSD into to APFS. APFS is Apple's own file system meant for SSDs, so all we have to do is select the drive, hit erase, all the default parameters are okay, and format the drive. This is a process that will take a very long time and can depend on a multitude of factors like how fast your USB drive is. Just be patient and everything will be okay. Now, once macOS is installed, you can use Migration Assistant to restore your Mac from a previous time machine backup, which is what I'll be doing in this case. If you want a fresh install, you don't have to worry about any of this. The amount of of time it takes to restore can depend on many factors, but the main bottleneck is going to be how quick or slow your time machine disk is. Even then, just be patient and let the Mac do its thing. Once everything is done, you have just upgraded your MacBook to a whole new SSD. Alright, so in terms of boot up times, there isn't really a big difference because the Apple SSD was not slow. But if we do a Blackmagic disk speed test, we can see how blazing quick the new Samsung SSD is. Obviously, this depends on what SSD you get, but this standard Samsung 970 Evo has much faster write speeds than the Apple. SSD. This will especially be great if you are doing some IO intensive tasks like video editing with high bitrate media. But perhaps the biggest luxury is just having more space. Finally, I can have Microsoft Office and Xcode installed at the same time, which I could not do before. Also, since these Macs do not have the T2 security chip, you can partition the SSD and load Linux onto it if you're into that sort of thing. And since these are all Intel-based Macs, Boot Camp still works, so if you need to use Windows for school, like I'm in engineering, I need to use some Windows programs for engineering, 
you can dual boot this easily and you don't have to have space anxiety anymore. All right, so that's it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like down below. We are Top Spec. We make tech videos every single Monday. So if you enjoyed this video, there's probably others that you like already on the channel. So make sure to get subscribed so you don't miss our future content. That's going to be it for today. Thank you for watching and we will see you guys next week. Thanks.